Stanford University. And in this video, we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship and Silicon Valley. So next, I'd like to talk a little bit about Stanford, Silicon Valley, and enabling experimentation. So if entrepreneurship is fundamentally about experimentation, fundamentally about experimenting with new ideas in the market, then we need a setting, we need a context that supports that kind of experimentation. And so while we don't entirely know exactly why Silicon Valley has come, come about and what maintains it as such an innovative place and such a good environment for startups, we have several ideas of what's led to this, and they all tend to support this process of experimentation. And so one thing is that this combination of the um, strong university in Stanford has led to a kind of complementary interaction with, between industry, basic research, and creative individuals. So Silicon Valley is kind of a planning ground for new ideas, where new ideas could come out of the university, could come from the students and faculty who are doing research here, and find their way into industry. So part of the story, if you look into it, involves um, defense, um, government-funded R&D, and the role of um, one of the deans at Stanford's engineering school, Fred Terman. Certainly a part of this is the fact that the university brought in students and inventors, hired faculty, who could create these novel ideas and help disseminate them. So the students would learn about these new technologies while at Stanford, enter the workforce and bring some of these new ideas into industry with them, some of which would get commercialized via startups. Another aspect of this was uh, the role that Fred Terman and others played in encouraging students and faculty that entrepreneurship was an acceptable activity on campus and that we should be commercializing and bringing to industry these research results. Some of the other factors which may play a role in Silicon Valley's success include the talent pool and um, social networks. And so the university is constantly bringing in uh, new faculty, new students each year. There's a new graduating class. Um, and in Silicon Valley, these tend to become tightly embedded in social networks where everyone knows one another, can make introductions, and people with good ideas can very quickly get access to people who have funding and who have the knowledge and means necessary to commercialize those new ideas. There's also a kind of loyalty to the technology rather than to a particular company. And so a lot of the engineers working in Silicon Valley want to see the technology move forward and be commercialized and so are willing to help out one another with technical problems. Another aspect is the importance of um, immigrants. And so Stanford and Silicon Valley have played a role in um, bringing citizens from other countries into the U.S. and allowing them to pursue their startup dreams here in Silicon Valley. So, uh, perhaps due to Stanford and other reasons, as many adopters of new technology who are willing to experiment and try out new things that might help their businesses. It's also been noted by Annalise Saxenian and other scholars that there's a kind of job hopping culture, that it's okay to work for one firm for a couple of years jump to a different firm, uh, try out a startup and fail. And there's also a services infrastructure of lawyers and accountants and people who can help in outsourcing various aspects of the business so that the entrepreneurs can concentrate on developing their new technology. Finally, uh, one last set of factors that may have helped contribute to Silicon Valley's success as a hotbed of entrepreneurship um, is the funding aspect. If entrepreneurs are going to be experimenting with new technologies and new ideas in the market, someone's got to take a risk on them and provide, provide a bit of funding to support these experiments. So um, Silicon Valley's venture capital industry and network of angel investors who can not only provide financing but also provide some value-added assistance and real help in creating the venture. There's also an entrepreneurial spirit or DNA um, that may have come from California being kind of at the western frontier and this idea that people could always move west and start over again. That if you tried something and failed, that was okay because you could always move west and start over again. And so this may have helped in developing these role models who demonstrate both confidence that you can try something out and you might succeed 
um, but also a certain level of paranoia that you always have to continue innovating and you have to be on edge that another competitor uh, might come in and do this before you. But I think one of the most important things to emphasize that makes Silicon Valley unique um, is this idea that it's okay to fail, um, that failure is a natural part of experimentation that naturally if you fail, you've learned something from that failure and you're gonna be more likely to succeed the next time when you try again. And so I think this location is fairly unique in allowing people to fail and not become stigmatized by that failure. Um, that you're actually more valuable having failed because you've learned something. There's also a kind of culture of very flat organizational structures and a belief in meritocracy that if you have a good idea, you should be able to try that out uh, without having to go through too many different layers. And so a lot of startups tend to have this more flat organizational structure. There's also a lack of enforcements of non-competes in California, and this may have helped contribute. So employees can leave a large firm and um, not be afraid that if they set up their own startup that they would be um, potentially prosecuted by the large for, firm uh, for having signed a non-compete agreement. And then finally, there's a culture that it's okay to talk and partner across company boundaries about common challenges and issues. So an engineer in one company can, if he's having problems with a um, technical challenge he's facing in developing a new product, can talk with another engineer at another company and people will be willing to help one another to solve technical problems. And so, I think outside of Silicon Valley, entrepreneurship has been increasing recently as more and more entrepreneurs and policymakers find ways to bring these aspects into uh, their own locations and find ways to either change the culture or change the institutions and policy to get around some of the hurdles and to enable a context that supports the kind of experimentation that is uh, uh, core piece of entrepreneurship. So I want to talk next about nine key models or frameworks for entrepreneurship. These are um, all going to relate in different ways to the process of starting a new venture and will give you some alternative and contrasting views of how to think about the process of entrepreneurship and what it means to create a new venture. Video which has been about entrepreneurship in Silicon Valley I encourage you to watch the next video where I'll talk about some key models and frameworks for entrepreneurship. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.